Today we have a crazy story of revenge against a bully at summer camp, making them do quite an activity. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, my boyfriend and I cleaned out his mom's house after she kicked me out. My boyfriend and I have been dating since 2016. His mom is very attached over him. Typical, no woman can love my baby boy like mommy can type of person. Narcissistic, my baby's accomplishments are all because of his mommy while all his faults are because he's with bad influences for friends. She also likes to use religion to try to guilt him. She doesn't like that I'm a single mom, doesn't like that I'm two years older than him, and doesn't like that I'm not all that feminine. Honestly, I don't think she'd like me even if I was none of those. There's other stuff where she would make backhanded comments to me and outright insulted me to her son behind my back and via text to him as if he wouldn't tell me or show me. When COVID hit, he had to return from college to come back home. In that time, his mom was living with her boyfriend in another county leaving the house, short of the tenants upstairs, on its own. When he came back, he invited me to stay with him, since he would be alone in the house anyway. I told him to tell her. He didn't because it would cause conflict. She found out and it still caused conflict, but she agreed to let me stay if I paid some money to her. Alright. And I did. End of 2020, start of 2021. She tells him when I'm at work that she wants me out of the house because she doesn't want me in her house and in her space. Despite, again, living with her boyfriend at the time, which was a near 45 minute drive. Boyfriend told her, okay, if she goes, then I go. She was not happy. So as we're getting our own stuff packed, she sends a message to him saying to take anything. So we took not just our clothes and possession, We took all the cookware slash pots and pans, the TVs, his dad, his ashes which were gathering dust at the bottom of a display case, the linens, towels and bed sheets for his bed, along with a futon couch in the basement, all the toiletries, lotions, basically except for the living room and den furniture, whatever wasn't bolted to the floor or in her bedroom, we took. She proceeded to get ticked and text him about how we cleaned her out, but crap, We got some decent cookware that we don't have to buy at least. Edit, let me clarify. His mother has long been abusive and has a history of narcissistic behavior long before I met him. She has justified any action she's done as the will of God and how he's always guiding her. She's the type of mom who, as told by boyfriend, that she never liked anyone he has dated. The type of mom who the only woman who should be in his life is her. The type to take credit for his accomplishments but blame his faults on the crowd he hangs out with, the crowd being a bunch of nerds and gamers who have been there for each other when the other is struggling. She's the type where even when I made sure to put thought, time and what money I could give into her gifts to let her know I thought of her, but get me some random shirt from a discount that had nothing to do with me. She complained loudly at a restaurant how she wished she could have shrimp after we informed her many times how I had a severe shellfish allergy. Of which, later that year on her son's birthday, she served me a shrimp cocktail. She's frequently disrespected our relationship, insulted me to him when I was nothing but nice, and snubbed whatever kindness and assistance I offered. Trust me when I say I tried for years to be good enough in her eyes. I'm pretty sure it was the final straw at that point. What I enjoy most about this story is not the fact that you finally just kind of got away from them, but the fact that the boyfriend was completely on board for just taking whatever you could grab and just go with it. Although I'm very surprised that OP didn't have to include some detail of some great grand blow up over that happening. Also hi, I'm Steven and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said our next story is getting petty revenge on my HOA. I've lived in an HOA for a number of years, and it's always been a very reasonable HOA to be a part of. Fees have been low and they haven't really bothered anybody, unless it's a serious issue that needs to be addressed. Q new dirtbag HOA president. He took it upon himself to drive around the neighborhood and send notices out to everyone that was storing their garbage cans on the side of their houses. Technically, he's right. The HOA covenants say that trash cans have to be completely screened from view. That said, my house is at the end of a cul-de-sac at the top of a hill and the trash cans have been stored on the side of the house for the last 10 years. You can only see them if you're really looking. So I received a letter and 10 days to remedy the situation, either by storing my bins inside my garage, which is gross because they stink, 
or building a screened enclosure for them. I'm going to comply, but I'm going to be petty about it. I'm not moving them inside a minute earlier than I have to. A fun thing about our neighborhood is that we have a neighborhood park that is owned and managed by the HOA. It has a covered picnic area, basketball court, baseball field, and a pretty nice playground for the kids. It's a great gathering area, and it's usually pretty busy in the evenings and weekends, and the HOA even hosts gatherings like music in the park nights with live bands. Unfortunately, our HOA is not in compliance with their own covenants. After a careful review of the HOA rules, I've just written a letter to the HOA board about two covenants they are in violation of. Trash cans are not screened from view. There are two trash cans that are identical to the ones used in the neighborhood, placed in the park for folks to dispose of their trash. A porta potty is placed at the park for the convenience of the neighborhood. Unfortunately, our neighborhood covenants do not permit any structure of a temporary nature to exist on any lot. My letter gave me 10 days to cure my trash can violation. I'm providing them with the same notice. If they don't remedy it, I intend to call out a couple of other issues pertaining to the president of the HOA, like how he used HOA funds to purchase trees that screened his yard from the neighborhood entrance, or how his backyard fire pit is within 10 feet of a combustible structure, which is against city code. I was happy to live and let live, but freak this guy in particular. Another day, another story of living in HOA paradise. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to live in a neighborhood that's probably safer than average, has basketball courts, probably a swimming pool, a nice park, but I just don't think I'd be sane living in a place that has somebody hounding looking for trash cans, making sure your weeds aren't too tall, making sure, God forbid, your house is the right color of beige. Excuse me, did you park in your driveway? You have 10 days to remedy this. Our next story is, guy wouldn't let me pass him on the highway, so I got him pulled over. A while back now, I was driving home on a two-lane highway between cities pretty late at night, and a dude in a Dodge Charger was in front of me. We were both going a bit above the speed limit, nothing crazy, only like 10 kilometers an hour for him and 20 kilometers an hour for me. I wanted to pass, so I moved into the left passing lane and he proceeded to accelerate to exceed my speed and jump into the left lane to cut me off. I thought nothing of it, figured he was speeding up and I still get to go to the speed I wanted, so I got back into the right lane and kept at the same speed, but then the freaker jumps back in the right lane to cut me off again and slows down to below the limit. Every time I tried to pass him, he'd do the same thing. After like 20 minutes of this, as I've done this drive many times, I remembered we were getting close to a side road where police like to hide. So I stepped on the gas and went like 40 over the limit and sure enough, he tried to cut me off again by going about 50 over. I quickly slowed down right before we passed the side road and the cop immediately jumped out and pulled him over. I've never felt a greater moment of satisfaction in my life. If you're out there Dodge Charger guy, freak you. There is almost not a thing more satisfying than when somebody is being a total idiot on the road, hearing that whir of the sirens kick on, and know that idiot is getting pulled over. It's literally pure bliss. Our next story is, kept finding bottles of peppermint schnapps in my yard. I collected, then waited. I bought a house on a corner when I moved to this area. I kept the yard cut and clean. This corner seems to be a place where trash was thrown out regularly, from the beginning, I kept finding peppermint schnapps pints along one of the fence lines. The first one I hit with a mower. It seemed every day I would see one on my property in the same spot. I knew it had to be a neighbor, so I quit throwing them in the recycling bin and started to collect one after another. I hoped to eventually find whoever had this bad habit. I filled one huge contractor bag, then one turned into two. One day I was off early and trimming the hedges by the house. Then I heard it. A thunk followed by something hitting the fence. I finally caught the litter bug. Now I have the car and the driver. I jumped in my truck and headed the direction the guy went. He had just got out of the car and went inside. I drove back home and loaded the heavy bags of glass pints. Later that evening, I went to this man's house. There was another car in the driveway. I got out, rang the doorbell, and walked back to get the bags. An older woman answered the door as I was coming back. She asked if she could help me. I said yes. I told her that I've dealt with this problem and was tired of it. The husband had now come outside. I took one bag and dumped it on the driveway 
bottles broke and flopped around. I grabbed the other bag and did the same. I told them that I was sick of picking up after him and had better not see another pint in my yard. She immediately turned to him and started yelling. Apparently he had a bad drinking problem and promised that he quit. He would down the pint before he got home and my yard was his dumping zone. I never did see another bottle of schnapps after this. Honestly, really sad turn of events. But hey, at least you stopped having these bottles dumped in your yard. Opie has way more patience because if this happened a couple times, I'd immediately grab a camera and be ready to film when it was going down. Our next story is, my narcissist ex called me after 8 months no contact on a new number at 3am and I showed him. So this man, some backstory, and let me just start with this, I know I had awful taste. I literally stopped dating because of this guy altogether, to this day I'm trying to break the cycle, okay? Anyways, I was an alcoholic and not in the right frame of mind. I'm sober now, but that's a song for another time. Anyways, we met on freaking Tinder, never made one again, started dating immediately because that's what I used to do, jump into relationships with people I barely know. I come to find out this man is a felon, living with his mom, still married, but separated from his wife with a kid that lives five minutes up the road that he never sees. No car. Had I been sober when I met him, I don't believe I would have stayed as long, but I hated myself so much and just wanted someone to love me when I couldn't do it for myself. So he has all these red flags, right? And I still decide to stay, because at this point I'm falling in love with him. However, I also ignored the fact that he went through my phone a month into knowing him and called me all sorts of names when he saw me in short shorts or that when he gave me an STD, he blamed it on me and made me feel awful. Even though I had my paperwork stating I was clean beforehand as I got tested in between partners. I ignored the fact that he bought me a hoodie for Christmas, then secretly gave it to his wife slash baby mama when I left it there, then saw her wearing it all over social media then he still lied to my face about it. Come to find out he truly pitted her and I against each other. Called me a tramp for how I dressed, though it was what attracted him in the first place. Blame the fact that he didn't see his kids on me because he chose to see me on weekends instead of her because I lived too far away. Was a two hour drive and we've been broken up a while now. He still doesn't see that kid. I paid for everything. I always came to him. I always came second to his ex. He pitted her and I against each other the duration of our relationship. Her and I are friends now. Hey boo. Anyways, I say all that to say, while nobody can make you feel inferior without your consent, I consented at a time I was very sick in my life and let this person literally suck the life out of me. Since getting out of him and alcohol, I've only gotten better in all aspects of my life. So he calls me, right? 3am after 8 months no talking off a new number of course because everything is on his schedule and his terms. I answer sleepily because who is calling me at 3am? He goes, it's James. Before you hang up, I just need you to know that hearing your voice is the best thing that's happened to me in months. So I just start literally laughing. So then he starts laughing and goes, I know right, I miss you so much, I'm so glad you're not mad. And I'm laughing still at this point. Now he's laughing because I'm laughing, so now we're both laughing and like, hard. And then while I'm simultaneously laughing with this clown, I hang up. And then I laugh even harder because what the freak did I ever see in that dude? I finally felt nothing. And it was the closure I never knew I needed. Life is way too short. Get out while you can. It gets better. Not many people, when they have a relationship mistake like OP clearly and self-admittedly had, get that opportunity to laugh in their face and hang up on them. I mean, it's almost picturesque. This next story is, don't pay your debt? Guess that'll be your wedding gift. A couple of weeks ago, my uncle married his long-term girlfriend. As custom in my country, every wedding guest has to give the newlywed a gift for their marriage. For context, my parents have a mechanic workshop my dad repairing the cars, and my mom doing the documents part. Almost everyone in my town goes to get their car fixed there, including my other family members. As in every business, there are people who, after having the car fixed, promise to pay eventually because they're short on money, and never do. Obviously, family are the most common ones that fall into this category. My uncles, mom's brothers, have a running theme of not paying on time, or not at all, and my parents let them pass because... 
well, their family. They prefer to let them go over causing any more drama in the family. One of my uncles, let's call him T, took his car to my parents' workshop to get it fixed. Since he needed a car while his was getting fixed, they lent them the business car as is custom with the clients. A couple of months go by and my parents are tired of asking him to pay them and take his car away because it's affecting the workshop at this point and my parents tax money since they have to use their own money to pay for his repair because he doesn't pay them. Next Saturday was my uncle's wedding and my mom already knew what she was going to do. Instead of giving them money or any of the gifts they asked for, she instead gave them the absent of his payment. Once the wedding passed, she gave them the envelope containing all of his bills, summing to the absurd amount of 2,000 euros. Basically, their wedding gift was getting their debt paid and not owing my parents money. They were pretty ticked about it because they were looking forward to getting money, which is in my opinion quite entitled to be honest. And if you asked me, that is quite a great wedding gift. I thought my mom acted in a petty manner while also being nice. Too nice, maybe. 100% if you're in debt and you get as a wedding gift just free of that debt, you should take that and run. These people are definitely entitled. They clearly didn't have much intent on ever getting that money back to them. Honestly, this made it easier for both sides. They knew they probably weren't getting that money back anytime soon. And hey, there's something of a gift, even if they don't really take it as one. This next story is how I got my neighbor to stop calling zoning on me. My neighbor repeatedly calling planning and zoning on me because I had more cars than they liked. When zoning would show up, I would park the cars on the street instead of in the yard, legal, until the zoning guy went away, then put them back in the yard after he was gone. Then my neighbor built an addition on the side of their mobile home. I waited until they were finished and stopped by to talk to them. I said, that addition looks real nice. How much did the permit cost? At that point, I knew they were screwed because my county doesn't issue permits for additions on mobile homes, so there was no way they had a permit for the addition. Oddly enough, I stopped getting visits from the zoning guy. I never called them in for the permit violation. I actually just wanted them to leave me alone to live my life. I remember my parents telling me a story of living in a certain place a while back and you could call complaints into these regulations and you could do it anonymously. So imagine you have some terrible neighbor living next to you and they want to spite you in whatever way they can. If you slip up or you have anything that's slightly out of code or isn't fitting planning and zoning, they could just anonymously complain left and right over and over and have these resources wasted. Coming out there, having somebody warn you to correct something, it sounded horrendous. Our next story is Scam to Fake Sugar Daddy. A few years ago, I was testing the dating waters online. Anyone who presents as female knows dang well that just existing as such invites a whole lot of weirdos and scumbags. Most of the time you block and move on without a blink. A really popular scam is these dudes pretending to be sugar daddies. I don't know why they even looked my way honestly when all my dating profiles were heavily just, I like coffee in one piece. Anyway, the scam is they'll basically try to hook you with a promise like, I'm looking for a baby to spoil. 3000 a week allowance. Interested? And the scam comes when they say they need money from you to finalize some transaction, or confirm your bank account is connected, or even just to prove you're trustworthy of sending money back to. Some even say they need your passwords and login info so they can log in and transfer all that sweet baby cash over. And then they promptly block you, or worse yet, get access to an account and drain you dry. Super embarrassing scummy crap. Anyway, I had some dude message me with the whole, I'll give you 10000 a month to be my baby, line. And I don't know why I didn't immediately block this one. Maybe it was a boring day at work. I can't remember where my head was exactly. But I do remember being curious if he'd basically stick to the same dang script every other idiot like him stuck to, and he did for sure. I wasted his time a while, just crap like, oh wow, that would be amazing. Oh, I can't wait to start living my dream lifestyle. Let's go on a cruise. Let's go on three cruises. Oh wow, diamonds, etc. Eventually, he got tired of my yammering and threw down the gauntlet. He wanted me to send him $200 one time, so he knew I was serious. I responded with, oh, I don't know. That's a lot of money for me and this is a big deal. Can I make a counteroffer first? 
you send me $50 first, and I'll send you that 50 and 150 more back? So that way I know I can trust you and you know you can trust me all at once. The idiot asks for my cash app and sent me $50 and I immediately blocked him everywhere. He never disputed it or tried to stop it from what I can tell on my end. So either he's just that dumb or maybe he realizes what a jerk he was being having the tables turned. Jump change in the end really but it felt real good. Went book shopping and got myself a little treat. How many people actually fall for these scams? Like, I understand most of these scams would usually target somebody that's older or out of touch, but when you're on, like, Tinder or something, how many people are really foolish enough there to fall for that kind of a baby, sugar daddy, scammy thing like that? I mean, if it worked out enough for them, I suppose they would have enough money to say, screw it, if this person actually does send the 150 back, $50 well invested. This next story is, I turn my bullies against each other. Back in the early 2000s, I was bullied a lot. I was short and fat, still short, not as fat now, which made me an easy target. Most of it was insults, but some guys got physical. In particular, this one kid would rough me up badly in the halls and chase me down after school to harass me. I'll call him Shrek because he was huge and had an attitude problem. I went to a pretty low-end school growing up. Most teachers didn't give a darn about anything outside of their classrooms, so nothing was done about it. There was another bully, I'll call him Donkey cause he was a butt, scrawny kid would hurl most of the insults towards me, lots of slurs and comments about my mother sleeping around. He also had a habit of stealing my stuff, pencils, books, water bottles, anything I left unattended. Again, nothing happened to stop this. Eventually I came up with a plan. I knew where Donkey's locker was and that he left it unlocked during lunch. I also knew Shrek would often leave his bag on the schoolyard on the sidewalk. When the right time came, I stole Shrek's backpack and shoved it into Donkey's locker. Made sure to be as rough as possible while I was at it. I remember hearing Shrek was super ticked that his bag was gone and was shaking down anyone who we thought had taken it. I mentioned Donkey had a habit of stealing my stuff. Well, it wasn't just my stuff. He was pretty notorious for being a klepto. Shrek apparently heard that too and forced Donkey to open his locker to see if he had it. Every night I wish I was there to see the look on Donkey's face when Shrek pulled out his smashed up backpack. Not sure what happened after, but Donkey showed up two days later with a broken nose and Shrek was gone for two weeks. When he got back, I was no longer his main target. Now this is some high IQ devious stuff. You gotta just pit them against each other, get them to knock each other out. I mean, I'm sure those two weeks where Shrek was gone and Donkey showed up with a broken nose were pure bliss because they probably weren't messing with anybody during that time. Our next story is, my roommate encouraged our criminal next door neighbors to move. Several years ago, my roommate and I rented a flat. Neighborhood was great except for the next door neighbors. They were running a chop shop from a garage in our alley, had noisy parties till all hours of the night, and were periodically raided by the Department of Corrections. They had the same landlord as us and all complaints we made went unanswered. He never had the courtesy to call us back. My roommate came up with an idea of a way to encourage them to move. He called a demolition company and made an appointment for an estimate. They were a company with bad Google reviews and seemed desperate for the business. Roommate informed the demo company that he was the landlord and that he was out of town but the tenant will be there to let him in. On the day and time of the appointment, we could see from our flat when the demo people paid their visit. We could see that there was a small argument, but the demo people left. The demo people called my roommate, and he apologized and said that he'll wait until after the tenants have been evicted to reschedule the demo. About a week later, the next door neighbors left in the middle of the night. The landlord sold the house to some house flippers, and we got better neighbors. The other people on our street threw a party to celebrate. My roommate didn't tell anyone what he did. The people leaving was enough reward for him. So am I to assume that the people who were staying there were essentially squatters, considering the landlord flipped it right away afterwards? I mean, I get they were running a chop shop, but were they also just, like, living off of squatter rights as well? This next story is Revenge on BFF's Cheating Fiancé. My best friend's fiancé came home from work one night and casually told her that he had gotten another woman pregnant. She decided to move 18 hours away, so I was even more angry at this dude. She set up a place to stay in her new state, and while this guy was at work, 
We packed everything into a moving truck. She either took or sold everything out of that house other than his clothes and belongings he had before they moved in together. I wanted this dude to be as inconvenienced as possible, so I removed all of the shoelaces out of his left shoes and packed them into the moving truck so that he couldn't relace his left shoes. I was heartbroken that my friend left, but this made me feel just a tiny bit better. I mean, how many times do you actually like go to the store or go online and shop for just shoelaces for one shoe? I'm sure it's relatively easy, but it's not something I commonly do. Also, I feel like lacing your shoes up when you have to put a whole new shoelace in is one of those tasks that's, you know, not that bad to do, but for some reason it's so tediously annoying. I think it's all just the little go back and forth and back and forth. Ultimately, this isn't going to waste this guy's time too much. God forbid he's in a rush though and he realizes, I don't have any shoelaces on my left feet. Our next story is, I deleted some dude's TikToks because he was using my email account. So a long time ago, my then main email address was leaked in the big Adobe hack of 2013. While no one accessed my account and harmed it per se, people from all over the world started using it to register to several websites. I first complained about it because it would be a nuisance to migrate to another account, as my address was short and catchy, containing no numbers, so I didn't want to part ways with it. Sometimes when people created accounts on services, I just marked the emails as spam and kept on going. Other times, I would log into their profiles and just shut them down the moment they created their accounts, hoping that would send the right message. Fast forward to the summer of 2023 when I started getting emails from TikTok in Filipino. Some random guy set his account using my email address. I went to try and delete the account, but it required SMS verification. So what did I choose to do instead? I changed his profile picture to Sam Well, a French singer famous for his hit what what in the butt. I used Google Translate in order to switch his username to I like men. I changed his bio to if you stop using my email in your account, you will be free. In Filipino, of course. And finally, deleted all his TikToks and blocked every account he followed or followed him. At first, he didn't seem to notice or care. He kept switching back his profile picture and kept uploading TikToks. But recently, it seemed to have stopped. I still use my email account, just not on popular or secure websites, and people keep using it to register things such as Mexican banks, US car dealerships, or Brazilian clothing stores. Usually I can't do anything to stop them, but for a brief couple of weeks, I felt some sort of vindication. What an absolute classic OP just brought back to the forefront of my brain and anybody else that knows about Samwell. I said what what. Our next story is, made a bully at summer camp, clean up my pee. This was a long time ago when I was around 13, but there was this kid that would push and trip other kids at this week-long summer camp I went to. He would throw pieces of horse poop at people, randomly try to tap other kids in the nuts, just an all-around jerk. So cut forward to day 4 or 5 of camp, and this guy was terrible the whole time. I see him go into the bathroom near our cabin. I went in after him and there was maybe a tiny trickle of pee that he left on the seat. My brain exploded with a brilliant idea and I decided to pee all over the stall. The entire toilet, the floor, the walls, it was a mess. I came out of the bathroom and immediately went to our counselor and told them that the bully kid had peed all over the place and left the bathroom a total mess. Because this kid was already on everyone's nerves, the counselor didn't question it for one second. He marched over the kid, handed him a roll of that one-ply see-through toilet paper, and told him to clean up his mess. The entire time he was crying and saying that he didn't do it and no one believed him, I just sat there with a massive grin watching this guy clean up my pee, and 20 years later, I still reflect on it and get a good laugh. You reap what you sow, this guy was a total jerk, enough to the point where they had enough of a reputation to get held accountable for this pee-soaked bathroom from this counselor. At some level, if you're that renowned and have such a reputation that they're unquestioningly going to force you to march in there and clean it up, you probably earned it. Unless, of course, you got that one counselor who's just a total jerk and being told somebody did something, they have blinders on and just go, you, you are awful, you're, do this, here's your punishment. 
I think most of us growing up as kids have met some kind of adult like that. They're told something without the context and they flip out and punish the kids in some way without ever doing any kind of due diligence. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.